I do anything, Lord, I want to follow you. <clears throat> I want to come after you. I want to follow you closely. And Lord, I, even as I follow you closely, I thank you for the promise uh, that you have made, that you will make me uh, a fisher of men. Uh, you will make me a minister. Right? Um, whatever the Lord has called you to be, uh, that Lord is making, the Lord is, that transformation is happening. He has promised that transformation. So we can say intentionally, say, Lord, I I commit myself to that process. And the second thing we can pray is, Lord, um, I just want to be, um, be obedient, you know, with that intentional, immediate obedience. Right? So let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for the call that you have for each one of us. And Lord, even as you've called us, Lord, into various things that you have planned for us, Lord, we see um, in the in the verses that we read this morning just now that uh, Lord, you have said, Lord, that as we follow you, you will you will make us, Lord. And I thank you that you've called us to follow you first. You called us to follow you, the the teachings, the instructions, the precepts, Lord, um, the commands, uh, and your life pattern itself, Lord. And uh, we thank you. We thank you for the work of your Holy Spirit who enables us, who teaches us, and who leads us into all that you have taught, into all that you have, uh, Lord, shown, Lord, that the Holy Spirit teaches and reminds us, Lord. And we thank you for the work of your Spirit. And this morning, Lord, we yield to the work of your Holy Spirit, even as you lead, lead us, even as you teach us. Yes, Father God. And Lord, we pray that our obedience will be intentional and immediate, Lord. Our obedience to follow you, Lord, will be intentional and immediate, Lord. That we'll be <clears throat> conscious of the fact that, that you are our shepherd, that you will always lead us and lead us into good things, Father God. It might be difficult, challenging, but Lord, we know that you have our good in mind when you lead us. We thank you because you are a good shepherd. Father God, you've come to give us life and life in all its fullness. We thank you that we can remind ourselves that you are reminding us of these verses. You are reminding us of who you are, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. We commit ourselves into your mighty hands even today, Lord, even as we uh, look into your word. We thank you. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Okay. Right. So last class, we uh, we started off on discipleship. Right. We looked at a few things um, on discipleship, like who are disciples, where the Christians were called disciples, or, or the disciples were called Christians. We looked at that. Um, and uh, we are called to be disciples. We are called to make disciples. You know, which is again um, different from being just a believer, right? Uh, we are called to make disciples. It is a process, and uh, Jesus, uh, the Lord's desire is that, as disciples, that we will go on to make disciples. Right? And then we also looked at uh, the marks of a disciple, or what are the distinguishing marks of a disciple? You know? We looked at a few things like uh, I obey his word, I remain in his word, I continue in his word as a disciple and how a disciple will walk in love, how a disciple will go after fruitfulness or pursue fruitfulness and um, uh, and so on. Right? And, as, and lastly, I think we saw how as a disciple we carry our cross right? when it comes to sacrifice and separation and suffering the cross, which, which, uh, which, uh, which um, you know, which is a symbol of that, which which is a reality. You know, the cross talks about sacrifice, separation from the world and sin, and uh, it is also a place of suffering. Right? So, uh, as disciples, we experience that. And right? when we say the Lord wants us to carry the cross, it means that it's a life of sacrifice. It's a life of separation from the world and sin, and it is a life which involves suffering for the sake of the gospel, sake of Christ. Right. Um, then we also saw uh, how one makes disciples, the process, right? how the Lord Jesus made disciples. He called them, he was with them, uh, they, they continued journey together as a team, 
he sent them out to do what he himself uh, taught them and uh, they learned from their experiences he never gave up on them etc so we we looked at all this um, in the last class okay, so today we look at uh, you know as disciples how there is a like we said there is a process right there is a um, process to disciple making but it's good for us also to understand there is a there is a path you know uh, there are several stages uh, that a disciple or, or a believer will go through okay uh, like a let's say a person we share the gospel with someone the person became becomes a believer now as we begin to journey together in this process of making disciple the disciples that believer in the lord jesus learns to become a disciple or becomes a disciple okay so the believer becomes a disciple that is one stage and the believer goes on to become uh from a disciple he goes on to become uh, a leader or, or sorry a minister right he goes on to become a minister so first he's a believer then he goes on to become a disciple and as he he or she continues being a disciple uh, an intentional follower of the lord jesus then learning and discovering uh, the plans the purposes of god the will of god and wanting to please him uh, and wanting to live a life that is pleasing so what happens is there is an overflow of that right in just being with the lord in being with jesus and continuing with jesus then there's an overflow of that life and we call that a life of ministry begins to serve begins to testify so one begins a becomes a minister and from that place um, as a minister one goes on to become a a leader right so so we're going to look at that we're going to look at that growth this growth path now uh, it is helpful for us right? it is helpful for us to keep this in mind even as we minister uh, maybe in our churches or whatever ministry right uh, it is helpful for us to keep this pattern or keep this path growth path in mind uh, so it will it will help us to impart a vision to the ones whom we are mentoring the ones whom we are teaching it will also help to uh, for us to you know um, have this in mind so we can know that okay now i can move this person or i can i can pray and teach and uh, you know go with this person so that this person develops into uh, a disciple you know what what are the things that i can do to develop this person from a disciple to being a minister right and what are some things that i can do in order to you know help this person become uh, from a minister to a leader where they themselves are leading others where they themselves are maybe raising up other leaders right so uh, it will be helpful for us as well okay so let's uh, let's look at that uh, today i just uh, share the screen and we'll get into it um okay just a minute okay just coming up okay so so growth path okay so that is what we saying the the growth path or a map for a uh, for a child of god right one who's growing okay now um so as a believer okay what happens as a believer um we embrace the lord jesus as our savior we repented we have faith in god right so this is all this happened as believers now as believers now we need to uh, uh talk about some foundational things right some uh, very basic things that the believer needs to be strong in okay um what is it that is repentance from dead works so 
there is repentance that is moving away, uh, that I turn away intentionally, turn around, turn away from sin, from doing those things in the flesh, right? So turn away from that, from ungodliness, um, so everything that does not please God. So as a believer, one needs to be strong in that. Okay, so uh, so we need to teach the believer. Okay, Th these are some things that um, that you need to uh, that you need to walk in that repentance. Or do things that please God, and do not get into things that displease Him, displease Him, or that that grieves the heart of God. Okay, and secondly, how to have faith in God. Okay, it's, it's again a very basic thing. Like now, I've believed him i've had faith in him for salvation now how to have faith in god so basically the whole thing of you know how faith comes how we grow in faith through the word of god and uh, how to have how to exercise our faith in him for our daily life right uh, when we face challenges and uh, when we when we just go through life how to live by faith okay then also you know, when it comes to baptism, okay, because baptism, you know, there are three three things that are mentioned when it comes to baptism, or three baptisms, right? Firstly, the fact that we are baptized in the body of Christ. We become believers, we see in 1 Corinthians 12, right? We are actually baptized, we are placed, we are immersed in the spiritual body of Christ. So, so that is one baptism. Second baptism, the baptism in water. Okay. So, as a believer, you teach the you know uh, 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 you know you teach the new believer about uh, baptism, about water baptism, that it is an expression of the death, burial, and resurrection uh, of Christ, and how you identify with it, and and how it's a proclamation that you belong to Jesus. It's a proclamation that you are dead to sin and alive to Christ. Right. Um, so. And it's a it's a, it again a command of the Lord. So we are doing this in obedience to what the Lord Jesus commanded us. So uh, what a baptism. Then thirdly, baptism in the Holy Spirit. Right? So the Bible talks about all three. We read in the Book of Acts that you know we Holy Spirit, uh, the Lord Jesus baptizes the believer in the Holy Spirit, and that is something for every believer. Okay, so then. Uh, the uh, the next one is of laying on of hands, you know, praying, blessing, healing, the ministry of laying on of hands. Uh, I'll just move to the next one. Then um, faith in the resurrection of the dead. You know, the, some of the basic doctrines that uh, that you you know what happens to a believer when when that believer dies and what what happens in um, you know when when Jesus comes and uh, and and the reality and the truth of all that to be strong in that okay and the understanding of eternity and judgment so um that we will come to that place of uh standing before god for the judgment seat of god as believers as believers you know for the works that we have done uh and uh, it's a judgment of rewards not of condemnation because we have already believed in the lord jesus okay so these are some things that or we can say foundational principles that we can teach the believer. You know, it's not a one-day thing, but a believer needs to be taught this over a period of time. Uh, it should not be something that a believer is ignorant about, right? So, believer needs to be. Um, so, we as believers, we need to know it, and uh, and whom we are teaching and whom we are developing into discipleship or whom we are making the, as disciples, they also need to know these things, okay? So then, a disciple grows, sorry, a believer grows and progresses into becoming a disciple, okay? So a disciple, one who is pursuing, one who is following the Lord closely, one who wants to be like the Lord, right? Who is, in other words, we can say the one who is pursuing Christ-likeness. I want to be like Jesus in character, in compassion, in power, in love, uh, in everything, right? pursuing Christ-likeness, wanting to be like him. Okay. Now, this is a lifelong thing. 
you know we never stop being a believer okay at the same time we never stop being pursuing to be like jesus right we we all we continue to grow in christ likeness um and if you look at ephesians 4 verses 13 and 15 okay, ephesians 4 which talks about the fivefold ministry and so on um uh, it says uh, let me just read the verse before that okay, ephesians 4 Um, so, from 11 onwards, he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. Okay, uh, So something, uh, yeah, verse 15 also, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ. Okay, So uh, here we see that, um, you know, the, the, uh, the work of the fivefold ministry to equip the saints for the work of ministry and in doing so that all believers all the saints come to or grow up uh, in unity and grow up to the measure and stature of the fullness of christ so which means to be like jesus right so as we are making disciples as we are encouraging believers onto the path of discipleship so this is one of the things that we come um, uh, it's not it's not just okay i you know i come to church i attend you know uh, bible study um, so the intention the objective of it is you know are you or am i becoming christ like right? is the walk with jesus changing me in my decisions my thoughts my lifestyle the way i talk to people uh, the way i face challenges uh, the the you know when i'm disappointed when i'm scared when i'm irritated when i'm angry you know has it changed the way i respond to these things i react to these things like is it a righteous response is it is it a righteous reaction um, to to all these things, right? So, otherwise, um, you know, it can be a very frustrating thing for a believer right? if we are not growing in Christ likeness. So, God's desire for us, will for us, is that we grow in Christ likeness. Okay, so um, in Galatians four nineteen. So Paul writes and he says, my little children for whom I labor in birth again until Christ is formed in you. Okay, uh, The message Bible says that, you know, Christ's life becomes visible in your lives. So he's, Paul is saying, you know, I'm, you know, we've been studying about Galatians, right, in the other class. So um, about all these false teachings and everything happening and then they are, turning from the gospel. So Paul is saying, you know, I'm praying, I'm ministering, I'm literally laboring in birth in my in my prayers and ministry so that Christ's life becomes visible. The life of Christ becomes visible, like it's tangible. So people interacting will know that you are becoming more Christ-like. You're becoming like Jesus, right? Until Christ is formed in you. Okay. Uh, and several other scriptures also, you know, Colossians 1, 28, 29, uh, 28 and 29, him we preach, that is who? Christ. We preach Christ, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. And that word perfect we know means complete, full, mature in Christ Jesus. So he's saying, to this end, I labor. For this goal, for this objective, I labor. You know, I'm, I'm working hard. I'm putting in effort. 
striving according to his working which works in me mightily which means that you know i'm i'm putting in effort i'm laboring i'm working hard according to his working right uh, because the holy spirit is stirring me up he is working in me and he's empowering me he's he's directing me according to that in accordance with that um, i'm striving you know i'm doing this and uh, so it's a spirit led labor it's a spirit led striving so that others might become more like jesus okay so that is that is always uh, you know the end result the objective okay and several other uh, you know scriptures we'll we'll look at this also you know uh, first corinthians 3 one corinthians 3 1 to 3 Uh, we've, we saw this last semester. So uh, Paul is saying, you know, I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it, and even now you are still not able, for you are still carnal. For where there are envy, strife, divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? Okay. um one corinthians 13 when i was a child i spoke as a child i understood as a child i thought as a child but when i became a man i put away childish things so to as believers to come to a place of maturity becoming disciples of the lord jesus so uh, when we say becoming disciples of the lord jesus yes you know there are several other things which means that you discover the call of god we discover you know in in the process of make, becoming disciples uh, you know we we go through this exciting process of uh, discovering the call of god discovering the gifts uh, of god uh, uh, upon our lives the, the holy spirit uh, you know um, uh, giving us revelation of the gifts of the spirit and we of course there's so much of uh, adventure and excitement in walking in this you know in being activated in these gifts and uh, using these gifts for the glory of god right so what we should understand that uh, like paul says pursue love and desire spiritual gifts so it's the love of god which is the character of god becoming more like jesus is a pursuit meaning is something that we go after is something that we chase after knowing him and becoming like him okay so as believers who are walking as disciples we focus on these things right so we continue this through our lives we need to understand that okay so then it is for uh, the, all the ones who are continuing on the path of discipleship to come to a place of serving okay so god has given me this god has poured this all these into me now i pour out and i serve so this this phase of ministry right so the believer grows up comes to a place of maturity of christ likeness and begins to serve others so that is what we call as ministries so serve others so that they can be blessed serve others so that they can be helped they can receive strength and so on right um let's read uh, hebrews 5 okay talking about um, uh, the writer of hebrews saying you know um, we have much to say hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing for though by this time you ought to be teachers Okay, so these believers have spent time being believers, being disciples. Um, so, is so the writer of Hebrews is actually kind of rebuking and saying, "No, by this time, though by this time you ought to be teachers, now you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God, and you have come to need milk and not solid food." for everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness for he is a babe but solid food belongs to those who are of full age that is um, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil 
Okay, so from this, what do we understand? What do we, um, you know, what do we learn? The uh, the will of God, uh, the plan and the desire of God is that everyone comes to a place of maturity. Everyone comes to a place of serving. Okay, so so here. The writer of Hebrews is saying that, yes, by now you ought to become teachers. You know, you ought to be helping others understand. You ought to be uh, helping others learn. You ought to be taking others from a place of immaturity to maturity or taking others from a place of ignorance to knowledge and understanding. But you have need to teach someone. You have need for someone to teach you the basic principles the first principles right so something has happened there what has happened is maybe people you know were uh, were um, living a life of carnality not really pursuing god not wanting to want to be wanting to be like jesus because here you know it says um, um you have come to need milk and not solid food. Right? When we read the previously in 1 Corinthians 3, right? We um, Paul talks about that, right? He says, I could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to babes in Christ. So that's what we that's what we see here. So he's why were they you know not able to receive spiritual food? And then he uses the you know the terminology. Um, I had to feed you with milk. I fed you with milk. Okay, why? Because you are still carnal. So maybe that's you know that's one of the reasons right? they were still carnal, still fleshly in their thinking, still fleshly in their pursuits, in their living. Okay, so so here um, the desire we see the uh, the actual desire the will of god is for those to leave behind all that and come to a place grow to a place of helping others serving others okay um so so that others can be nurtured others can be helped others can be instructed in the ways of the lord okay and it's it's not something that uh, you know the same way we have learned we just begin to teach others Right. So that others can come to a place of being ministers as well. Okay. The second uh, thing that we need to understand is that we find our place in the body of Christ. Okay. Now we discover that God has placed us in the church, uh, in the, the body of Christ, you know, because we are all been placed in the spiritual body of Christ. So in the body of Christ to um, you know, to be to be placed there and and to help uh, others. So to discover where has the Lord, or how has the Lord placed me in the body? Uh, well, some of us could be you know in the fivefold uh, to preach and teach the gospel, uh, preach and teach the word of God. So it could be that uh, yes, God has called me to be an apostle, pastor, prophet, evangelist, teacher, right, in the body, or it could be several other things, right? To be a deacon, to be uh, to to minister in compassion, to to minister in um, you know uh, helps and administrations, um, to several other things, to leadership, uh, generosity, giving. So many other things, right? So we we begin to find our place and uh, in the body of Christ, and and then we begin to minister, we begin to serve. Okay? So it comes with great responsibility. It comes with um, uh, you know uh, accountability. Right? There is a responsibility because uh, you are no longer children. We are growing up, so we, we yeah. are. So, which means we are uh, responsible, we are accountable, which means the Lord will actually ask, okay, these were the people that were interested in your hands. What did you do? Right? So, we are accountable to God. And, uh, and you know, James 3 talks about how uh, if we are, you know, uh, there is a greater accountability, that is stricter judgment for those who are teachers who are called to be teachers 
right? In the way they live their lives, in the way they teach others, in the way, you know, how they are building them up, there's a greater accountability, right? So, which means that it's not to, you know, discourage us from nurturing. Uh, if you if you look at that verse, James chapter three, it's not to discourage us. It's not to, uh, you know, say that okay, um, oh, I I need to be careful. So I I should not desire to be a teacher. Uh, let me just be an ordinary, you know, believer. Just do ordinary things. Well, the the fact is that if God has called you to do something, then just be that. Right? If He has called, He has He has a good plan. Right? So uh, we need to do that. But the fact is that it's a responsibility. It comes with accountability. It comes with even stricter judgment. Right? Because people's lives are tied to your life. You need to understand that. People are looking up to you. Right? People are... Uh, uh, it's not that we are trying to be a people pleaser. We are God pleasers. But God, but God brings people and sets people uh, under maybe your leadership, under your ministry. People are looking up to you. So, and they are the flock of God. Right? We see in... Uh, in, in, in the episode of Peter, that you know, with a flock of God, which means that God will require us to, you know, be accountable to His flock, uh, accountable to Him regarding His flock, because they are God's flock ultimately, right? So, so all these things. So, therefore, we minister, we teach. And uh, and of course, it's a two-way thing. You know, it's it's not just okay. I go on teaching, I go on ministering, and then uh, you know the other person also is responsible. Right? The one who is being taught is also responsible. The one who is a believer, who is uh, you know who is walking as a disciple, is also responsible to receive, put to practice, uh, actively pursuing God in order to grow up, change, and be Christ-like. It's a two-way thing, right? But the fact is that we, as ministers of God, we need to, you know, actively do this, be accountable, live a life of, of example, and not only in our teaching but in our life itself, right? So, um, so that's the second thing. So we uh, bring others to a place of becoming ministers. Okay, so this is something for us personally that we move from being a disciple to being uh, to being ministers, like believers, disciples, ministers, but we take others along the same path to be able to serve others. You know, what is it that God has called? So to help others, you know, what is God call, God's call on your life? Pray, right? Find out what has he graced you with, right? What are you moved towards, right? What is it that, you know, sometimes even frustrates you? You want to do something, but it frustrates you. And right? what is God pulling you towards? You know, the, your heart is yearning to do something. Like the more you study the word of God, the more you you know read about it, you 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 feel pulled in a direction, in wanting to help in a certain way. Now that may not be the same case with um, others. Right, the others might be doing something else, but we're not comparing ourselves to others. But then you, you know, are uniquely called to do something, right? So, uh, what is it to help discover that? And maybe the other person also, you know, the one who to whom you are teaching and helping, the other person feels compelled. There's an inner compel, you know, kind of a compulsion to go and serve in a different way, do certain things, um, and our responsibility is to encourage them, and so that they thrive, flourish in that, you know. But we we put all these foundational things. Right? We teach all the foundational things. Um, but to really encourage them to find that place okay? and not to stifle that, not to put out that fire and say, okay, you be quiet, you know, you, you sit in a corner. It's not that, but to really encourage them to find their place and to thrive, for them to thrive and flourish. Okay, so, um, so we do that. And then, you know, for them to move on, to come to a place of leadership. Okay, First Timothy 3, let's... Uh, um, let's read that. First Timothy three verses one to seven. 
Um, okay. So Paul is actually um, out, uh, you know, he's just laying out the qualifications for someone who wants to serve, right? Uh, and, and serve in a position of leadership, really. Right? So this is a faithful saying, if a man desires the position of a bishop, um, in other words, overseer, he desires a good thing, good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, temperate, sober-minded, of good behavior, hospitable, able to teach, not given to wine, not violent, not greedy for money, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not covetous, one who rules his own house well, having his children in submission with all reverence. For if a man does not know how to rule his own house, how will he take care of the church of God? Not a novice, lest being puffed up with pride, he fall into the same condemnation as the devil. Moreover, he must have a good testimony among those who are outside, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Okay, so we see the listing of character, the listing of character qualifications, the listing of ability, the listing of how one should be relationally with the family, uh, and so on, or also in terms of experience, or in terms of uh, him, the person not being a novice or a new believer, but one who has, you know, one who has uh, a good testimony, the one who's continuing with the Lord. Right? Okay, so as leaders, there are three things we can look at for ourselves and to see that others also have these qualities in them. We lead by example. Okay, we lead by example. So there's no directing or giving some theory or some teaching and we not following it ourselves or we not having it in our own lives. Right? So, which means that when we when we want others to be something, to to have something, you know, to do something, the thing is to ask ourselves, you know, am I doing that? Am I having this established in my own life? Okay, so First Timothy 4, let's move to chapter 4 and verse 12. Let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers. Okay, so this, who is writing this? Paul, to whom is he writing? To Timothy. And uh, where is Timothy in Ephesus? And what is he doing? He is actually a spiritual leader, but he's a he's a pastor of the church in Ephesus. So to him, he is writing and saying, he's a he's a young person and he's in a place of leadership. So to this spiritual leader, Paul is giving this instruction, saying, be an example to the believers in several things but the, the important thing is be an example so which means as a spiritual leader as a leader you be an example you lead by example okay. in several things you know he talks about uh, be an example to others in word in conduct in love in spirit in faith in purity be an example you know, in the in the way you live your life, in the in the words that you speak, in in uh, in your behavior, in your expression of love, in in spirit, you know, in, in your, with your motives, with your intentions, in the depths of your heart, right? you be an example in that. Okay, let it not be something that is superficial. Let it not be just an outside thing, just because people are watching you. But even when people are not, right? you be this in your innermost being, in spirit, in intention, in motive, you be an example. You know, so it's a, it's a, it's a high call, but it's not something that's impossible, but this, it's, it is a high standard, right? So uh, lead by example. The second thing we see is that uh, we must have a servant heart, which means uh, the scripture talks about and the, and the Lord Jesus talks about a, a very different kind of leadership. 
And yes, we need to be able to lead. Yes, we need to you know, give instructions. Yes, we need to be able to direct and delegate and all that, right? But it's to lead with the heart of a servant, which means that the intention is to serve people. The intention is to influence people uh, for their betterment, for their good. Okay, so it's not a self-serving. No, it's not something to boost our ego, our position, our reputation. And it's not to build our empire, right? Our riches. It's not that. It's not a self-serving uh, leadership, but it's really a servant leadership. It's right? serving others, so that um, you you understand that the Lord has placed you as a leader among people to serve them to help them to serve them right um sorry i just yeah okay the third thing is that we learn to walk in uh, humility okay. humility is uh, something that's um uh that's you know we need to be clothed in something that we need to be um, you know uh, we need to intentionally walk in uh, because God gives grace to the humble. You know, as a leader, we need the enabling grace of God, right? As leaders, we need the enabling grace of God, and uh, we learn to walk in humility, not in pride, not uh, you know because pride will bring us down. Pride will really. Um, you know, we, we cannot be pride or prideful or be boastful because all that we have, we have received from God. So there's no, you know, pride is illogical, right, for a leader. Uh, all that we have, all that we do, maybe the leaders, the God, God has, you know, raised you up and given you influence and given you a voice to speak, maybe even to the nation or to the nations. Do you understand that it's it's not something that by your own you know accomplishing because that will not stand right um because the lord very clearly says that without me you can do nothing so if if it's a work of the flesh then the lord is not in it right and it's not well it might thrill people excite people but it will not really bless and edify them right so we see that we need to learn to walk in humility, walk in submission. Okay. So we see these qualities as the qualities of a, of a leader. So in order to help others, we personally first take this path as believers, disciples, ministers, and as leaders. We personally take that path, walk that path. Um, and uh, we help others walk that same path. Okay, so uh, so this is um, something for us to think about, something for us to you know learn, and and this will really give us a vision. You know, if there are, if there are, you know, maybe as a pastor, uh, maybe as a person who's discipling others, maybe you're serving in a team. Right, um, this will give us a vision. Okay, I see these people. And uh, I see myself uh, in this stage, so I need to go go up, you know, to the next stage. Uh, I see this person. This person is a believer for many years, but the person really needs to go to that next stage of being, um, you know, beside. So here are these things that are pulling this person down. You know, here are these many things that are actually preventing this person from becoming a true follower of the Lord. It's their own struggles. Maybe it's some addiction. Maybe it's some stronghold. Maybe it's you know the work of the flesh. Maybe it's some anger issues. These are preventing this believer from becoming a follower of the Lord, a disciple of the Lord. Maybe that person is not you know actively spending time in prayers, pursuing God in worship or reading the Word. Maybe it's a lack of understanding of the Word. Uh, so you know you begin to see that and say, okay, now if I if this person ever needs to move to being a disciple they need to you know uh, change these things so let me help them 
Okay. Then you see the disciple and you're saying, okay, hey, they are being disciples, they are following, they are very content, but they're not serving. Okay. They need to be start, uh, you know, they need to start serving, ministering, because scripture, you know, we read in Hebrews, by this time you ought to be teachers, but you again need someone to teach you. So because of carnality, because of various things, they're not serving others. So how can I help them to serve? And um, you know, uh, maybe there are people who are serving, but how can we help them to be leaders? Um, they are ministers. How can we help them to be leaders so that they can be even more effective? You know, they can grow in the will and the plan of God and, and uh, you know, whatever scope, uh, the realm of influence that God has for them, that they can actually step into that. Okay, so um, about the leadership, you know, how maybe there are issues that need to be fixed, wanting to, maybe they are looking for personal, uh, you know, uh, reputation and fame and popularity, maybe that needs to change, that they need to have a servant's heart, or, um, or it could be that, yes, um, uh, you know, that they are not leading by example, they are telling others, but then they have issues in their own lives, they are not really setting that example themselves. So, well, that needs to be, maybe they need to learn, right? And maybe it's an issue of pride, or maybe it's an issue of not willing to submit to God, not willing to be accountable to people. You know, all these things, we help them to take their place as, um, you know, spiritual leaders, right? Okay, so we'll, we'll stop here, take a break, and then we will, uh, we will come back to look at uh, some more on uh, we'll look at the specifics of small group, you know, we'll start off on that. Okay. <laughs> 